Welcome, everybody. Episode 30 of Dharma Unfiltered, coming in from the University of Miami. We got myself, Reed Kastner Lang, and a special guest, Gohar Ali. Gohar is from Pakistan, and he actually won the honorable mention in the NASA Space Settlement and Design Contest at his high school. Um, he formed a vegan and cruelty-free cosmetics startup um, in, in high school as well. And he is now brainstorming um, on a startup which goal is to communicate scent. So Gohar, if you want to introduce yourself and we can dive into it from there. Hi Reed, thanks. Thanks for having me here. Uh, well, so I'm Gohar and I study aerospace engineering here at the University of Miami. And so, um, yeah, I'm from Pakistan. I am an international student here. And um, as Reed mentioned, I had a, uh, a cosmetic startup back in my country, which was based on my high school internal assessment. And uh, currently, yeah, we are brainstorming on some ideas, and that's how I met Reed. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so let's, I think the first thing to dive into will definitely be just kind of you being an international student. Um, like, wh why did you choose, of all schools, the University of Miami? Have you, had you previously traveled here and liked it? Or, or like, why specifically did you choose Miami? Oh, yeah, man. So like University of Miami, uh, I actually knew a professor from here, Dr. Jang, and you know, he was more into propulsion and rocketry and stuff. So I, I read his, you know, biography and, you know, like uh, from the UM, pro, uh, you know, the faculty pro, uh, sites. And then I loved what he was doing. And that's how, like, I choose aerospace engineering here at UM. And then, you know, um, getting full ride at UM was something, you know. <laughs> That's how, like, I choose. I wanted, you know, to be here. Like, I don't have to pay for education, so why not? Why not give it a go? And so, yeah, yeah, I've that's been, uh, I ended up being here. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty. Getting a full ride to the University of Miami is pretty impressive, man. I commend you for that. Um, oh, yeah, thanks, man. Thanks, and yeah, I don't mind. Like, even if I drop out or you know whatever happens, since I'm here, like, just for exploring, you know. Yeah, it was funny that, so, that night yeah. that first night when we had dinner, you were like you're like, Yeah, I mean I'm just kind of here for fun. Like uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, go to classes, yeah. what do you do for fun? I, I go to classes and I just explore. <laughs> that's what I do for fun. Yeah, definitely. Like <laughs> that's what I do for fun. Like I just go to classes for fun and I'm learning things and you know. And, yeah. It's like why do we have to label things like like why can't that be fun why why like i feel like a lot of people look at like classes and um or i guess just day-to-day -day activities that would otherwise seem just normal but or, or even boring like if if you can get to a point in your life where you look at just like kind of the day-to-day -day as fun then you're 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 really winning you're really winning in life you know <laughs> yeah man yeah man you you gotta have some purpose in life like you know when you wake up in the morning you gotta have some purpose and that purpose should push you forward and you know when you enjoy that purpose you know like some people are curious they want to learn things and you know they have that they have some purpose in life you know so they are motivated every morning and like if they are enjoying what they do then it's obviously fun and you know they can yeah. yeah 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 and i don't think anyone really finds their purpose like i don't think everyone <laughs> really finds I mean, oh it's harder yeah that's why we have like a society full of depression and stress exactly. and if you don't have purpose then you definitely will be in a state of chaos and once yeah. you go to a state of chaos then uh, depression hits you yeah you know? like i don't think anyone like I always hear people say like you want to know the why of what you're doing but to be honest I don't know if that's even ever possible like if anyone's going to find like the why that their whole life revolves around like people have you know things here and there that they like they know things that they like they know things that they dislike and that's pretty much all that we can do find those things yeah. that we like and just do them like it, it, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's like, I think a lot of people 
think that they're gonna eventually like wake up one day and and be like i found my purpose like i found my purpose in life and this is what i'm gonna spend the rest of my life doing but that's yeah, just man, it's very hard to find a purpose that's true that's true and uh, I, I i i don't know how do you find the purpose by yourself like how how can you find the purpose and it's very hard but I think it's like breaking the inertia, you know, like once you break the inertia and you get immersed to something and you you think like this thing will have some impact on the world, like on long term, like if you think of a bigger picture, then there's a possibilities of finding out your purpose. And I said, like, as I mentioned, like, it's very hard to live without purpose. If you don't have purpose, then, you know, you will be stressed out and stress kill you, man. Yeah. Like uh, I, I was reading uh, an article like and they said, um, you know, uh, it was like a psychology article and they said like, uh, like the satisfaction and the happiness and the joy, especially like the joy comes in the process like this is not the attainment of goal, but it's the journey of achieving that goal. And once you achieve that goal, like that purpose being achieved, then your body will, you know, uh, automatically like, you know, default to uh, uh, an emergency state, like a state of chaos and they will want another purpose. And if you don't have another purpose, then, you know, you will stay in a state of chaos and which lead to depression and stress. So as I mentioned, like you need to think of a bigger picture and thinking of a bigger picture is like very hard. You know, most people live like in, a temptation or like you know a short balloon you know and they need to think outside like you know for instance like I read think for a while um like we live on this planet and consider it as a as a small you know space shuttle like we live on a space shuttle and in the future like if we get hit by an asteroid or something else happen like a natural catastrophe and so we will get extinct human species will get extinct and so, so we are like the next dinosaurs right. so like if somebody goes and ask a dinosaur in the tomb and a dinosaur would definitely say that we wish like if asked the dinosaur about their biggest regret then the dinosaur would say that we wish we had somebody who had a purpose who was an entrepreneur who think like outside of the box and who right. was a moonshot so by now we would have been rooming on Mars or Moon or you know you won't be in the tomb. Yeah. So it's better like you know to find a purpose. And once you think that oh we are getting extinct and you know human species will be not there, then you will get your purpose. You know. Yeah. Well, I'd like to backtrack to what you said about the purpose and from that psychology article about the purpose being kind of the process. And I don't think that everybody needs everybody's purpose needs to revolve around like bettering humanity or bettering the world per se i feel like everyone's purpose should be whatever they want their purpose to be yeah yeah or, definitely, like, definitely. Like, I, I think that like, there's so many people you, that just have no idea what they even like to do or like how to yeah. monetize <laughs> what they like to do like like i i, I understand like like there, there, there's going to be people that are those moonshot entrepreneurs and that are those like literal people that are going to try to like make sure that humans aren't extinct but i don't think a lot of people are near smart i sure i damn sure aren't smart enough to do that so i yeah. think that people need to find what they like to do first but the only way to do that is to keep moving like you said like you can't like it's, it's all about inertia and momentum like once you have momentum in something, whatever it is, that's all you need. Like you just need to keep moving in life. When you sit down and you're sitting, ah, uh, you're sitting at you home. You gotta move on, keep like, moving, and that's what I said. Like purpose can be short, you know. Purpose can be like, for instance, your purpose can be just to hook up with that girl. That can be your purpose. And you, once you hook up, then the purpose is gone. You are in state of chaos, and you are stressful. You know. So like if the bigger your purpose, the more happy you would be. Like the more like okay. you'll enjoy the journey, the more, you know? <laughs> because the so, journey is longer. Yeah, the journey it, or is the, longer. Or the journey is possibly infinite. 
right? And that's why, like, most entrepreneurs and most people, like, leaders, they, like, they have purpose in their life and they don't mind even, like, if they go through hurdles and anything, like, they don't mind it. They, they, won't, they don't impact them, you know? They right. have a great endurance for pain and, you know, for setbacks and because they have purpose. And so yeah. getting your purpose is something, you know, we should carve for. We should, yes. And it's a matter of like going through adversity is obviously necessary to be able to go through higher adversity or other adversity. Like I, um, I talk about Joe Rogan's podcast a lot on this podcast, but he has some like ex like Navy SEALs on and, and like Marines and people um, that were in the army and, and just kind of hearing some of their stories and how, because they went through those things, now just a normal problem, a normal civilian problem is like nothing to them. So it's like when you go through the really tough bullshit, even if it's not necessarily that physically hard um, labor or, or trauma or, or things like that, even if you just go through kind of a tough process of, of building a business, of solving some sort of problem or exercising, maybe you exercise super hard, whatever it is, if you put yourself through some pain or at least struggle, that's gonna obviously mold you into a sharper human being. Yeah, true man, true, I agree with you. So, yeah. so finding a purpose that aligns with what you like to do, one, but it also should be big picture a purpose that you might not ever be able to a longer with. journey you know a longer yes. journey the longer the journey the better and the happier you will be right but you might yeah. not ever be able to reach that goal you probably mm -hmm. won't right but if you, yeah. but you put a dent in that yeah but you would enjoy the you know the journey the the way the path and yeah and that's how you learn like some people like to learn you know their purpose in life is to learn things and you know like and that's how you learn things that's how like as you mentioned like that how that those are the things which mold you as a person you know mm -hmm. as a human being yeah so, do, do you know what i'm saying about kind of I, I find it hard to to even use the word purpose because i love uh, it, it, the, the first few episodes of this podcast i talked a ton about purpose and how to like i'm trying to find my purpose we should all be trying to find our purpose what the, what is the purpose of us being here if we don't know our purpose yeah. but i i think it's important to know that purposes change over time and purposes can be evolved over time and that purpose my purpose right now is probably a very different purpose than you know 20 years from now my overall yeah. like life purpose like and, and that and that changes with life experience like you have no idea how that's going to change and how, how you're going to change as a person you know what i mean yeah true 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 and that's very true man yeah it's like change over time and purpose like even like I, I guess I told you, like, when I moved here, like, my purpose in Pakistan was just to, you know, get into, like, university, like, my family wanted me, and in case, like, if I, I don't graduate now, they are going to murder me, you know, so I need, so my purpose was to get into university, but once I got into university, I, like, my purpose was to get into university, and once I accomplished that, I was like, man, I'm here now, so what's next? And I was like so stressed out, like I didn't know what to do, like next, what's happening next? But you know, like I was like very lost, but eventually like you discovered, you know, you re rediscover yourself. And that's what like, you know, that's what like guide you to the next part and tell you, you know, it's like a calling for you. So like breaking the inertia and like, maintaining the momentum is what is harder, you know? Yeah. But yeah. it happens, man, like eventually you get deal. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting you talk about getting into university. Like I take a nap every day and when I was taking a nap today, I was thinking about or maybe dreaming about that exact thing. That's, that's weird that I was thinking about that. But I was thinking about how like 
a year ago or, or a year and a half ago before I got accepted here, like my main goal or purpose was to get accepted to the University of Miami, the exact same thing, right? But then, you know, once I got down here, I, I, I never really felt um, per se lost because I guess I had a couple of businesses going and, but um, I think I felt more lost when that was the only goal, when the only goal was to get into the University of Miami because I didn't know what was next after that. But then when I yeah. actually got down here, it's like, I feel such a freedom yeah. knowing that I can do that, that, that I can make that I can make, I can make my life's calling. I can make my actions what I want them to be. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm not conforming to university standards. I'm not conforming to an employer's standards. And that goes all the way back to entrepreneurship, right? Like if, if you are, an entrepreneur and you're kind of, you're forming your own business, you're forming your own um, solution to a problem, whatever it is, like you're going to be able to remain a lot more true to yourself a lot of times. Yeah, very true, man. So like coming here, like I lost my, like I, I didn't lose, but I was not able to work on my last startup, which was in my country. And so it was something which like the startup we did back in my country, the Masha skin, and that was also like more you, like you, fun. Yeah. Like that was fun. Like we did that for fun. Can you explain that? Can you explain that startup just so the, the viewers have a little bit of context? Uh, yeah, like uh, so. You know, like in high school, we had to do some internal assessment, and for internal assessment, you have to carry out a small piece of some you know project and. In chemistry, I was like researching the physiochemical properties of you know different um, products in the market, like for soaps and like detergent and you know all different things. And um, I end up like you know those were like very co contents some you know uh, chemicals, and those were like toxic for you know skins. They were like you know. Um, uh, destroy our your pH level and you know right. many different problems. So there was clay in my hometown and that clay I researched that clay and I did some like you know uh, x-ray diffractometry and thermal analysis and different things and we got the result that this clay can absorb ions very well and it can you know reduced inflammation and we got some good results for that. And so I talked to my supervisor that, oh, let me make some products from this clay. And uh, I hope it's like, uh, you know, um, like it was mere to do for academia, like just to get your uh, project done and, you know, get right. credits for it. But once we did that, you know, we make a product out of some clay, which could be used as a face mask. And that, that was very helpful in absorbing oil from the skin, you know? And um, yeah, so once your, uh, once your oils absorb from your skin, like from your space, especially, you know, you're collaged and everything gets open and you don't have acne and you can get rid of many, you know, skin problems. And, so that works. That actually works. Like you know. So was that so, was that your first big, I guess? Um, yeah, that was my entrepreneurial journey. My first right. entrepreneurial journey. That was actually not like we didn't thought like maybe we can monetize this pro the, the, this product. You know, we were not thinking of monetizing, but we were just doing our project like to get credits. You know, for high school. So. Uh, once we make the product, once we managed to make, you know, uh, that that product, and so it worked, and then um, yeah, I thought why not to make it available in the market, you know, like monetize this product, and so I met my roommate back. Uh, I was living in a hostel, and I met my roommate, and we like thought that we can monetize this product, and from monetization, I mean, like we thought like maybe it. It would build some value in the market because it is based on some natural, you know, vegan and credibility free, and we are, you know, could make you can 
could even make it through like uh, your own hands. You don't need any big operation cost and stops. It was like a very simple product and we managed to, you know, uh, make some, you know, quantities like uh, 50 or 60s, you know, different products. And then we gave that to different people and, you know, like uh, we distribute that uh, and gift it to friends and they we had like positive feedbacks and suggestions and we got like we are motivated from that point and then right, right, right. we had an online stores e-commerce stores and momentum uh, yeah and eventually we got some recurring customers and that was the moment we were really happy that oh our our, our you know our idea worked out yeah, yeah but it was really like it we were doing it really for fun and then we ended up like you know in the market and right. so so a question that i would ask you regarding that is when you woke up every morning when you were building that what went through your mind in terms of motivation for wanting to build that was it the product itself or was it the the journey was it like the the process was it the product oh, or process? Oh, yeah so i was very young man like i was, uh yeah i was like in uh, like i was very young and so like i was like uh, to see how how like the how like the corporate works like how the money what is the nature of money how do you sell how do you exchange value you know that was the thing we were like you know we were very curious about and so um, I, and on the other hand knowing that you know making a product like something like through hands and which worked and which has like you know uh, which put some impact on the market and on the society and the people. And so we were playing around the product, modifying, customizing, adding additives and see how it affects the scale. And that was the journey which we really enjoy. And I, I used to work really like till very late, you know, and visiting different cities for like, you know, uh, not, not just for like, you know, um, uh, not for like, uh, communicate like making deals and you know I stuff remember. like that but just like you know seeing different markets and talking to people like would you buy our products or not and so was it mainly product. was it were you mainly marketing it in like your city like your specific town that uh, you could... yeah, uh, no yeah in the beginning i was looking like if people could buy your product or not like seeing the market and there was some good uh, you know products already available and but the problem with them was that those were like chemical based and chemicals are right. the favorite of corporate people because that are easy to produce. You can produce, you know, in large quantity and less amount of time. And so uh, making a vegan and cruelty free organic product is very hard because it takes time to make, you know? Right, right, right. So I, I used to talk to the people, but uh, a retailer and, you know, like the, owners of the stores and those people won't believe us and those are like no we already have some standard you know product in the market and so like you guys better market first and then we'll see so like we didn't sell any in the you know to the stores but we found an online stores and you know through digital marketing and through like you know instagram facebook and our own stores google ads we got many customers then yeah yeah and the so point when we got some recurring customers that was the point we thought oh it worked yeah. yeah yeah so that was so what what how old were you what grade were you in when you oh, i was in 11th grade yeah oh okay. so just a couple of years ago yeah and so once i graduated like once i graduated like we began working on that more like full time mm -hmm. and uh, I actually took gap year, like, uh, you know, after high school, I took gap year to work on that, to see how it goes, you know? And then after that, my friends were like, you need to get a degree. <laughs> Wait, so how uh, how old are you now? Oh, I'm 21. You're 21? Like, yeah. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yeah. realize that. No, okay. So Man, you graduated yeah. high school when you were 19. 19, after. yeah. Okay. And I was 19 then, so I took gap year to work on the product. And so like, it just seemed like, man, like I had no concept of money, you know, 
right, right. I, I didn't know like what money is, how do you get money? And so I, I learned about value. It's Great just exchange experience. of value, right? It's no better yeah. way to learn than by yeah. putting yourself out into the real world and like marketing. <laughs> like there's no better way to learn. Marketing. Yeah, man, you but, really learn about value. You learn about like, yeah. right now, if you think we are just a consumer, like we consume other people's product, you know, right? So we need to produce it. And once we start start production, we will understand the value, like which value a thing hold. And it's just like money is just the exchange of value you get. Like, right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's where yeah. it was very valuable. We got lots of, we learned a lot of lessons in the process, man. And uh, yeah, like yeah. marketing is especially on the side of marketing. And like yeah. we used to like, you know, sending PR um, to like Instagram influencer PR packages and one thing I learned like that did not work like you know sending products to for you know uh, promotion for yeah. to like Instagram influencers because nobody believed them they do it for everybody so we didn't get any customers through them yeah. but you know but the product speaks for itself like if you can um, recommend that to your, you know, to your friends, families, and your close relatives, then you, this is the point you are confident enough that this product will work, you know? Yeah, and I think that's one of the, um, like, obviously you can learn, you will learn so much more by putting yourself into the real world. And that's one of the big problems about academia is that people think that they're gonna learn everything just from their classes, like, and we're, a lot of times what they're teaching in the classes is either one, not relevant to an actual, you know, endeavor in business or two, not right. Like, you know, it, it, there's, I don't think that business or really anything in life can be broken down into a textbook. You know, a lot of times there's more, the world is evolving every single day <laughs> And marketing is different today than it was yesterday. Marketing is going to be different. Marketing, just as an example, but literally yeah, everything is changing every single day. And you can't just say like um, someone, a, a marketing professor, if I asked a marketing professor, um, you know, their advice on how to market my product, you know, a lot of them might say, oh, Facebook ads, Google ads, Instagram ads, that's the best way. But like, once we've done it, like we realize that that's not the case for its product. It's a case by case basis, right? Like it's different for every product. Um, and there's different ways that you market a certain different products. Um, so that's, that's one of the weird things about school. Um, um, I guess like, uh, as far as like marketing concern and like business is concerned, I guess like academia, Mm, academia was being mad like if you think back for the to the industrial revolution after that people made uh, you know universities and technical colleges to make clerk you know to make people run their industries right to like just mechanic to make people who knows how to operate this machines and so they made universities and after that like people just learn things and uh, and like, as far as like business cons concern, I guess like you can learn a lot of different concepts in academia, uh, but um, the better is like to go out and see like if you can really apply that to the real world or not, what you are learning in the classes, you know? Yeah. And things get absolute, like, you know, after a few years, things get absolute, like you said about uh, marketing. Yeah. So after a few years, it won't be the same, even like technical fields are not like, uh, you know the same after a few years different like innovations and you know um it's exponential you know technological innovation is exponential and different things come into being you know different methods different strategies mm -hmm. but school is not a bad man like <laughs> yeah like you know it's it teach you passion man like it teach you how to hold your pee <laughs> how to hold your pee in classes it teach you passion <laughs> You know, so, I guess 
I guess it's not bad that much, but if you <laughs> learn how to apply things outside, you know? No, oh, I mean, like, there, I, I, I oftentimes sound like I'm ripping on school a lot in this podcast in college. Well, I'm in college. Like, well, a lot of the times, you know, I wouldn't be having the conversations that I'm having if it was. Like, we wouldn't be having the <laughs> conversation if both of us yeah, decided. Like, so it's like, you know, it comes down to, well, but you, you know, that. bridging academia with industry is like a really beautiful thing. If you want to help human, like humanity, in terms of philanthropy or in terms of entrepreneurs, I guess every entrepreneur is a philanthropist because he's helping the humanity by creating pro- products, oh, right? Creating value, yeah. So, yeah. So, like, um, bridging academia with industry is something which should need like we need like and that are being done by entrepreneurs you know and so that's the this is the crucial thing the crucial thing you know to bridge academia with industry and if you do so then you can uh, revolutionize the world yeah but that shouldn't only be done in college like that should be a thing in high school that should be a thing in elementary school like i mean to, in a sense like, uh, yeah. Showing, yeah, I see. showing how it's applicable like what like um why should the average or most kids why should most kids have to get through calculus like i don't you know unless it may be if you if you're choosing to go into a stem related field it would make sense or finance or something, even finance. Like there's certain topics in school and forget about college, like even just high school, like there's certain topics that it's just like, why? Like, and it's like, I've, or, or, you know, English or math and all of these gen eds as they call them. Like we've been taking these gen eds since kindergarten. Like we've been taking these gen eds our whole life <laughs> for the past 13, 14, 15 years. Like, does it ever end? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It sucks. Okay. So, um, I guess academia, that's true. That's true. Like, you are actually taking a fish to climb a tree, you know? <laughs> yeah. You, so, that, that doesn't work. But there's something like learning calculus has very huge impact on like on STEM fields, especially like you learn the basic, you know, you learn like how if I make this, uh, you know, this product or this um, uh, material, especially how this is going to behave in real world, like you, uh, calculus really help you in simulations and it's, it's really helpful, you know, but for the people in STEM and those people who like really learn those things and who are like a plus students those are really valuable asset for an entrepreneur because entrepreneur pay them and they work for them they are asset to build enterprise for the people you know who are leaders and so they are the asset for entrepreneurs yes. those are a plus student who learns who does very good in academia because they learn things and that those things are very crucial for an entrepreneur and entrepreneur get help from them you know yeah run their industries and you know stuffs yeah. and um, i agree i think it's all necessary yeah. like it's yeah. all necessary but, to- you know like those people i don't know like giving them like salary like doing nine to five jobs and giving them like salary paying them salary is like like you like you are mitigating their risk like you are telling them to forget about their dreams so they can work nine to five for you and so like if you are paying them salaries so you are actually mitigating their risk they will not have any risk so they are happy they are happy with that yeah. but entrepreneurs is completely the opposite and they think differently and even like uh, read if you if you are a technical person and you are specialized in a certain field you can't be like it's very hard to think out of the box then like you can make only incremental change in that field but you can't completely revolutionize that field who can completely revolutionize those that field uh, those people who are like who doesn't know anything about that field because they think it can be done you know they they, they are imagining they are like like kids you know 
like they are more like you know the people like the entrepreneurs they are more like, important they seem important from, like trying to dip your feet as an entrepreneur into a lot of different buckets and not always be so absorbed into one industry because when you're absorbed into just one industry or kind of one field of thought like you're not going to be able to innovate within that field of thought it, it seems kind of contradicting but like if you are if you're kind of giving your brain balance between multiple you know fields like say you're you're constantly just studying the stock market or you're like literally all day every day and you never think about you never talk about anything else your brain isn't gonna like you could be missing something in like some some way to to make more money in your investments that's right in front of you but you're not seeing it because you're so caught up in the day-to-day -day actions of what you've been or habits of what you've been doing um yeah sure. like sometimes like sometimes we'll just have even even my business partner evan and i will be like sitting at a farmer's market or something and a customer who has no industry experience will just give us like some tip and it will just be like damn like we, we never thought about that <laughs> yeah my, my engineering professor says that uh, he, he told us in our class that you you should have like a phd in engineering but you better think like a kid you know think like a kid having degree uh, you know and having a, a philosophy doctorate degree so it's all about like thinking out of the box and that's how entrepreneurs think and if you yeah. have degree in a certain field then it's harder to think out of that field you know yeah you i like we make an about things like, it, yeah. like consider the scent like the same thing which we were like now uh, you know and brainstorming we were actually like if i asked an electrical engineer he would say no it's not possible how can you do that and once you explain to him like oh, this can be done this way and this way. And he said, oh yeah, it can be really done that way. So let's work on it, you know? So yeah. it's all about thinking out of the box, thinking like from different perspective. And I yeah. guess we talked about this um, once we had dinner and yeah, it yeah, was yeah. about, uh, you know, like the water, with the, the problem with fresh water. Right, you know? right, yeah. So I think how, how would like as an engineer thing is he would think like, maybe I could make a, uh, a machine which would purify the polluted water but how would an entrepreneur think he would say oh the problem with fresh water is uh, because the water are being used by uh, agriculture so he would think of like certain ways to minimize the you know the, the, the use of water for agriculture and he can think of hydrophobic and those concepts and you know he would save the fresh water but again he would say like you know why we have agriculture we have agriculture because of the stocks you know uh, 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 livestock because of the animals and we have animals because of the meat you know we need meat from them and milk from them but you can make meat by using stem cells you know uh, and uh, you can make muscles like you know tissues uh, meat tissues by using like stem cells from that cow or any animals you would like mm -hmm. and you would end up with meat without you know having agriculture or you know uh, buffalo and, and that way if you don't have livestock you won't have agriculture if you won't have agriculture you will have abundance of you know fresh water you know so the problem of fresh water lies in scientific biology so it's like very different you know we have a problem with fresh water and the solution is scientific biology. So like the problem is somewhere else and the solution to that problem lies in somewhere else, you know? Yeah. So that's how an entrepreneur think. And a person from the given field would think of some confinements, you know, some um, some ways which can, you know, which can't like revolutionize. It would be like a small picture. They would see yeah. it from small business picture. Well, I think when you're given how, like, when you're yeah. when you're given like a label, if you're if you're an engineer and you're given that label of an engineer, like you subconsciously feel like you have to think all the time like an engineer. Or if you're a CEO or if you're a CFO, for example, like if you're a CFO, you always have to be thinking from that financial lens, 
that's not human. That's a CFO. Like you got to think if we're thinking big picture, you got to think like, uh, you got to think like, like, like who you are, not necessarily like what your title is. You got to think you, obviously. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's how you got to think. Yeah. Right. Right. So you think from the CFO perspective or the CEO perspective. So many factors involved in there, like financial and, you know, like you said, and, a lot of things involved in it and impact and how I'm going to minimize the cost and stuff. So you don't think like from because of your title, but because who you are. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And being authentic with that and not, not worrying about what other people think, because if everyone gave their, their true unfiltered opinion on things, I think we would get a lot further than, having all of these political politically correct conversations that aren't getting to the the actual roots of whatever problem there is that's being discussed um okay what, what, let's switch gears a little bit what was it like growing up in pakistan i know you, you mentioned oh. that you, what you went to school, yeah man so went to the same was, school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay so now, uh, like growing up, I, I I had always like my bed facing the north sky and observing the stars. Like I enjoyed watching skies more than sleeping, you know. And so since that, I had been pushing all the frontiers of knowledge into cosmos to see human is an interstellar species, and you know, looking at the sky and you know all those engineering concepts came into being, and you know you get very you know you are in the state of you get really happy watching the sky and thinking and exploring around so that's I'll, i i you know like, like swat it's like a territory in pakistan and you know a small district i guess so i was born there and when i was very kid and the area has been through civil war and um, um, malala yusufzai the nobel peace prize laureate the youngest one she was like from the same district you know we were like from the same district and uh, yeah, we have been through civil war as well. That was the rough time, man. Right. <laughs> that made me who I am today. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. How, how old is she now? She is, I guess, I don't know, she was like three or four years senior than us. And okay, three years old. She had like some degrees from economics or politics from uh, Cambridge or Oxford. I don't know, but from England, she studied. Yeah. Yeah. So when did so that's how like in Pakistan, like yeah. So that's where I grew up, man. Yeah. So did you when did you start like researching the cosmos and, and stars and in outer space? Like was that so, or it was like when I was a kid as I told you, like when I got the concept of microgravity in my primary school, like one of my teacher mentioned that in the space, if you are in the space, there is no gravity. And if you drink water or if you like do something uh, like, you know, in, in the space, then it's, it's not going to fall down. And I, I was very curious. I, I, I was like, what if I threw like, a, like you know, a um, piece of steel or iron in the air? He said it's not gonna fall down. And wait, wait, wait. What, thought, what happens if you what happens if you, if you pour water? Yeah, yeah, like the the water got to stay there, and so wait, what does it do? What? Yeah. what would Sorry? it do? What would water do? Yeah, it will just like stay there in the air, like you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's but like, it would it like separate? Like would it? With the yeah, water it will bottle. separate from the bottle, but like the the water would stay there. Like it would revolve. Like it will go and like brownie um, <laughs> motion, or I don't know. Like, so it's really like <laughs> you get curious. Like you know, oh, how 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 it's gonna happen? Like it's it's not it's unbelievable, man. And from that point, I like discover like I really need to more know more about space and stuff, and you know. I used to read books and I used to read, understand physics, I, uh, especially Richard Feynman. I used to read his lectures and he's a great teacher, by the way. If you get a chance, look him up. <laughs> he, exp he used to explain things very like clearly and very in comprehensive way. So I learned a lot about physics. I used to research about space, propulsion, and 
uh, I end up like participating in space settlement contest in NASA, you know, and I was in seventh grade, especially oh. when I was very younger. And I got honorable mention for uh, those competition. And then I went on to publishing a paper on nuclear propulsion and in international conference proceedings. And it was like, uh, that was my first time like going to a conference and such a, you know, scientific gathering when I was in ninth grade. So that was like, you know, I had a poster presentation and yeah. And since that time, man, like I love, like I wanted to know more like how these things work, how the engine works, how we like travel, what are their, is their life exist or not, how the universe came into being. But they, those were like very philosophical, you know, and very technical, but I could not understand more of the concept from the technical perspective. Yeah especially the mathematics involved behind that but anyways i enjoyed i, I used to enjoy learning about those things and yeah yeah so is that something that you have been, so obviously you're studying aerospace now <laughs> yeah what do, what do you want to i know you said that you're doing it for fun but, but like, yeah it's it's actually for fun i i am i'm just like going to classes like i'm learning for fun i enjoy <laughs> classes really like you know <laughs> yeah yeah so first of all i guess let's, let's dive into more of this scent thing um tell 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 me more about that and just explain it as if you hadn't already told me about it so the viewers can get kind of a backstory on what you're thinking here um how are we going to communicate how are we as humans eventually or how is how are you going to communicate scent uh scent it's like uh, what we do basically is that um, I looked upon like history of scent technology and I came with um, a company called iScent and those were used to send smell uh, through chemical, you know, there was algorithm and artificial intelligence behind that and once like something happened, like if you see flower, then uh, like the machine would use to exhaust the scent of roses and flower, but that machine was based on you know, totally based on like, you know, chemical. So operational cost was so high for that, you know, for that machine. And it was very big machine and you have to, you know, refill that and, you know, take care of that. And so like, it was very costly machine and that did not communicate scent, but that used to like, you know, produce like exhausting scent at a particular time, you know? And that was very, that has like very, good usage and cinema industries and, you know, um, entertainment and like immersion and all those things. But what we do is like, uh, uh, we are actually um, uh, transmitting, a, like sensing the smell, then like uh, once we sense the smell, like those, you know, volatile compound, the you know the vapors come and hit the sensors and then sensor convert that you know disturbance to the you know to the electrical signals and those electrical signals are being characterized you know with different digital number right and so we are sending that through internet like from one device to another like the, the same way we are sending voice and the same way we are sending you know um, yeah, like um, radios and like sounds and you know in the same way we'll be sending it there and so like once the the once the receiver receive the signals it will you know it will like goes and stimulate your olfactory bulb and or like right now we have airpods right like we have airpods in our ears and we were thinking of making a compact nose pods yeah and so the signals come and hit the nose port and the nose port would stimulate your olfactory okay. bulb and those, you know, those signals would generate a, an electric stimulation and that electric stimulation is actually the smell. But it's very complex and very hard, like coming up with a, you know, a, a yeah. precise sensor. And so how did, how, did, how did you go from thinking about like space travel to communicating smell? Oh, yeah, that's very interesting, you know, like why we are going to space, we are going to space to explore, right? 
to like uh, look around and what's happening outside especially like the one is like very you know commercial we have commercial travels like taking satellites to orbit and getting fed but another is exploration you go to explore what's live outside like what we are seeing you know and uh, so like exploring different planets we can communicate like we can get the images from there, the chemical composition from there, and all different materials from there, right? But we don't get smell from there. And smell is something like uh, one of the basic communication between human and nature, right? And so I wanted like to make uh, space communication, like uh, space exploration more effective. We need to come up with our same technology, right? So it all so stems, it all stems from from space space yeah. communication communication and exactly space. Exactly, like consider well, like think like we have uh, a NASA rover like uh, on Mars right now. So how cool it would be like if we get the scent from there too, like we sense this the environment of Mars here back on Earth, uh. you know. But it's like very hard and complex process, like I told you. <laughs> but I got a team, like I got a very good team from UM. Like we have, um, uh, you know, we have people from biomedical and electrical, and those are like very motivated. And yeah, I hope we'll end up with something, but it's very complicated. Like, first of all, like sensing the volatile compound, the sensor, and then aligning it to a particular signal. And then moreover, like uh, once you align that thread, then like uh, then stimulating the olfactory bulb is very hard. Like you know, you well, not not only that, because, I would assume, but also just the sheer number, millions, millions yeah. of smells. Exactly, man, and it's like very hard, very complicated, and. But you start, with, I, you start with you start with start with one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like now, right now we need to carry out experiment first to see if stimulating olfactory bulb actually create a sensation of smell or not. You know, I just read some paper like I read stimulating, some, the, stimulating the what? The olfactory bulb, like we have olfactory bulb in the nose, right? Okay. And so once it gets stimulated, it sends electrical signals back to the brain. Uh oh. And that electrical signal is the smell, right? But, but is that already proven? Is that like when I smell something right now, is that already proven that that's how I... Oh, so I, I read about, um, I read in a paper, like I had to read lots of pre papers and, you know, research articles. Yeah. And there was people from Malaysia and that university proved that they have sent some smell by stimulating olfactory bulb. And so right now, what I like, maybe in the summer, I'm building a circuit and that circuit would like make a, a proper that car, that circuit um, will produce a frequency of current with you know a variable frequency and I'll get some volunteers and maybe test on them like if it's really create a you know sensation of smell or not and if it does then we have to go with a long journey and you know get funding maybe or you know learn more and you know, but yeah. right now in a, with academia, it's very hard to manage. <laughs> so, okay, so you get to that first step of of it making sure that that even works, right? Now, yeah. how do you collect a scent? How do you collect the scent of, of I don't know, a lemon? Right. Or, or, or how do you collect the scent of some food or a banana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scent. Oh, okay. So like we are making sensors and that sensors like this, like you're drinking coffee. So coffee is like most of them like are organic compound, right? Made of organic compound. So like when you have a coffee, the scent from the coffee, like those water vapor will goes and hit a proper particular medium and that medium as a sensor we will have a small sensor and once it hit the sensor it will make a proper like you know a disturbance and some like signals and that signals is actually the smell of the coffee you oh got me God. yeah <laughs> so like mm, like we will have 
uh, like simply you would have like sensors for it, you know, you right. make sensors and that sensor would smell the smell and then converting it to electrical signals and then sending electrical signals to internet. And then um, the receiver would get the sensation through nose port. So obviously the final product is chain is gonna, but what, what do you have like in mind for what the final product would look like? or not necessarily physically look like, but I mean, like how would the final product like work? And in, um, that, so physically, how would it work? And then also <laughs> like in what applications? Um, so application, like we were only like thinking about space exploration, but we had application and like uh, entertainment, virtual reality, especially like, you know, immersion, all the radio games. But moreover, maybe we could discover like many different scents, but there are people who lost their sense of smell and it would be very helpful for that. And it has an application in therapy as well. Like <laughs> in therapy, we have application of it as well. Like some people are addicted to certain smell and, you know. So, what, so, so we have AirPods, would there be nose pods and then an app that you could click? Oh yeah, yeah. I want to smell, I, I want to, I, I have Gohar here with the, with the nose pods in. I have an app and I'm going to send coffee to his nose pods. Is that? Yeah, it's, it would be like the, yeah, it would be like the same thing as like the headphones or the, uh, like the headphones we have, right? So every nose part would have like a sensor, like a sensor as well as a receiver. So it would sense like the scent and like it would send and receive at the same time. And yeah. And then you partner the technology with certain companies, whether they're doing VR or therapy or whatever it is. So it would, it would, it would definitely be more of a like commercial application. For mm, we have commercial whatever. application. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in e-commerce, like, you know, in e-commerce, we have application of, uh, and food and fragrance industry, like, you know, if I, if I want to buy some fragrance, then I could not smell that fragrance. So like through the internet, you know, so I need because some Because obviously device. there's the little, yeah. there's in magazines and stuff, or there's the little strips where you can smell a certain cologne. Yeah, you can do that in the magazine, but through uh, online shopping or through like e-commerce online stores, you can't do that, right? Right. We need to and have you, like certain, so we have application and marketing. Like right? among a wide variety of scents, so you can yeah. change it. Yeah. yeah. So like application in marketing, application in food industry, and lots of application, but the journey is like pretty complicated. So yeah. you're <laughs> you not know? obviously it's probably not in your mind to like look at it like millions and millions of cents. You're gonna look at it more like okay, where are we gonna apply this? What are the main cents that we're even looking for? This is after you make sure, this is after you even get the technology down, which is a- Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. So, so before you need to, you know, get the application and know whether it's really uh, influential, yeah. it's really put an impact. So if it does, then you should go ahead, you know? Right, right. Otherwise, if, if it doesn't have any impact, like nobody would want to buy like something which like, you know, is, like for it's some, like for VR and gaming, virtual. people would prefer. Yeah, people would prefer only like for virtual reality and gaming. But they were really like, unlike like a common person would not want it. Otherwise, like if you make it more effective, more immersive, and more precise, then maybe people would buy yeah. it. Not yeah. just for Plus communication. The technology and make a whole, you know, VR company surrounding it and be the only one even yeah that's how it's going to work otherwise yeah man and uh, like um that, that that's it yeah like for a while like making a whole vr company and then you know maybe like you, you can do storytelling or maybe you can just you know make vr games and right. surrounded by that but as I said, like if you make it like very immersive and precise and very like, you know, people would like, for instance, I'm watching World War II movie and I can send the smell of gunpowder, you know, gun, I can smell the yeah. gunpowder, the blood and whatever. So like people would definitely prefer watching it with a scent having 
uh, no, uh, a nose pod. So yeah, but then you get some weird sense that people that you know half people <laughs> like, half people hate, and it's like. But uh, but that's like watching a movie with like a saint. Yeah, that's true. You might have some parameters, and you might put some you know restriction on certain frequencies, and that's another whole story, man. But the basic things like you know like you might then you got a quote for the whole movie like you got a you know make a digital library like yeah. this uh, you know this time at this time this scent you know you are aligning the scent uh, electrical signals to the time of the movie you know so right. you have that's an, another thing like very hard yeah it's not in what sensors over right? time it's not just the scent it's not yeah like I don't know. Did a, did did a certain food scent smell different a hundred years ago? Like, um, it's weird. It's a weird thing. Yeah, yeah. That's how weird. would you know? <laughs> you do know. You yeah, would never how, know. Mm, yeah. So you just mentioned the food, and it has application in food industry too. Like some food get uh, like some food are like you can determine the health of different food like. Which yeah. food is in good and which is bad and which is no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then moreover, like if we dig deeper into this technology, same technology, all the you know, all the chronic inflammation, like for instance, cancer is a chronic inflammation, and others like lots of others, you know, chronic and you know, diseases, we can sense that too, you know. Right. You, if, and if you have a sensors and you could smell that, you know, like, for instance, I have diabetes, so like it would contain sugar and that sensor is capable of smelling the sugar, then it would tell you that you have this disease and, you know, you have this, uh, you have diabetics within, within this range. Yeah. So it's very beneficial. Like if you dig deeper into the same technology, it's getting very interesting, man. Like considering you wake up in the morning and you like, uh, you just, you know, um, you just, you know, like uh, you, you take the device, a same circuit and you just blow on it and it tells you which, which disease you have and within which range. So it's yeah. getting really interesting. That's very interesting. So what, so, what, what logically here, and logistically, so you, are you going to try to get the technology down um, and then raise funding to do the research on the different scents and bringing those scents into the technology? Or is it kind of which comes first? Oh, yeah. So like the long picture is like communicating scent. But for now, I'm like more like focused on like um, sensing the, you know, the like making a pro first of all like we need to come up with a prototypes you know and if we have a prototypes then we can we could get investors right nobody gonna invest if we don't have a prototype so right. we have a solid business plan a solid prototype and we could show somebody that can do it and we get you know funding then our focus would be more on like the technology itself like you know learning researching, reading more, consulting professors, you know. But one thing is like, we don't want to, you know, be be like, you know, dependent on money. Like, you know, in the future, if we don't have money, we would stop. So we need to be motivated by the idea, like what we are doing, right? Because so, it's gonna be a long process. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. So we need to be motivated by the idea. Like this idea is really interesting. It has uh, applications. It's really revolutionizing the communication industries, the marketing industry, and it is like all these things, you know? So if you are motivated by the idea, then I think money would not be a problem to you. And like depending completely on like funding and money would like, you know, that that won't lead you like you know for uh, you will have if you're, if you're completely ideas. product centric and you completely are worrying about about making the product the best it'll be the funding and the money will come yeah, yeah i really yeah. believe that you know whether yeah. something so, like, as a five dollar <laughs> bottle of ketchup or communicating set like it all comes down to the product exactly and so it's always come down to the products yeah 
and like we need to think like what money is and like if we know what money is like it's actually like we said you are giving something in like a value and a value can be a product or a service and you get the reward in term of money right so it's a value idea is a value like your prototypes is a value for an investors and he sees something in it and so you get the funding so that's how it goes like as you said if it's a bottle of ketchup or if it is a you know same device it always come down to the one thing yeah Wow. Yeah. So that's going to be, this could potentially be revolutionary. This will, if, if, if it works, it will be one of Only the, if it works, man. And if we stay motivated, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's going to work out and it will yeah. be like very, yeah. it all comes down to the product, but behind the product, it all comes down to the people and it all comes down yeah. to having the right people on board that, um, you know, aren't just going to be motivated right now, but are going to continue to be motivated. 10 uh, 20 30 years from now, you don't know how long this like you know what i mean like mm. um this could potentially i mean even even just when i think about something as small as ketchup or or, or sauces or salsa or whatever it is something uh, on the food industry like that even these businesses the one like they take you know five ten years to like really get to a point at, at least from businesses that we've heard of five ten fifteen years and that's something just as small as just ketchup. And now imagine something like this. And obviously, you obviously the people that you have on board and the funding that you have backing the idea are variables that kind of can can change that. That yeah, yeah, time. man. So it's true. Like having a good team is very necessary. Like we have, like we are two. We are like around four people right now, and we are motivated, but. Like, you know, if you have a good idea, like if you have like a revolutionary idea then people can work with you and they can even work for you if you keep them motivated, right? They are motivated by the idea. They found it challenging, you know, they want to work on it. So like many good people would come to you and even they can work voluntarily for you yeah. because of the nature of the idea, you know? Yeah not yeah. limiting it necessarily just to like you miami people yeah there's so many there's so many people there's so many people that have not this specific i mean maybe there's people that have I mean, have you read anything research about people that have tried something like this already oh uh, at um no not at um no just just like anywhere have you researched like your, your concept at all and seeing if it's been um, attempted or at least researched before. It's, it's only like confined to academia at the moment, like people are doing it at academia and we are making good use of their, those papers and those journals and, you know, yeah. those professors. But nobody has put it, put it to, into a product. Yeah, yeah. Nobody is thinking of commercializing it because it looks very, you know, unrealistic if, it's, if you say it. Like I, I reach out to professors here at UM and one was like at University of Chicago. And they, they both said like, you know, we can't because this thing like we, we already have lots on the plate and we are busy and occupied, but this thing, we wish you good luck. And like, we don't think this, like they were not really like, you know, into it because yeah. they thought this is not gonna work or this is just like, a, they, they are just like dreaming of it, like yeah. the way I explained to it. And well, that's why that's why you know, it's weird I, because I, people in academia yeah. are people in academia, and it's like people in it, it's all about bridging academia with industry and taking those things that you are teaching or preaching as a professor or researching and actually making something of it. Like that's my whole thing with that, that bugs me about academia. What the hell is the point of talking about it or reaching conclusions if you're not gonna actually bring those conclusions to the real world? True man, like that's like, this, for, for that we need entrepreneurs to break the academia with industry and you know, I, was, I reached out to a professor and he was, uh, he was very good like his, um, uh he i guess he did phd and pattern recognition and that was his uh, area of expertise and so 
he said like i'm sorry i'm really busy i can't work so i i met his phd student and who was uh, supervising like the student uh, like uh, he was like in his final year of phd he was almost to i, I guess he is already graduated or he'll be graduating this uh, yeah he's he's going to graduate this spring and so the student told me that this professor used these books and he learned all these pattern recognition thing from this these books and i i brought those books and now i'm reading those books you know to understand that concept because <laughs> the professor was unable to work with us so i'm i you know we are reading his books and there are lots of things which we don't understand even, but we are, you know, monkeying around and looking around and researching and so, right. you know, that's yeah. so like you need to be able to, you know, to read something which is not of your area of expertise and you are not scared or afraid of it, you know, you enjoy learning. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing, like every day, like having that, I mean, as basic as it sounds, just having like a growth mindset, because you can either be, if you can, Jordan, Jordan Peterson, um, a psychologist, famous psychologist said, uh, you can either be in love with what you know, or in love with what you don't know. And that's the root of humility. You know, if you're in love with what you don't know, um, you're going to constantly be learning every day and you're going to yes. be, you have your ears open to learn. But if you're, if you're, if you're obsessed with what you know, then you're only talking. Like you're never, you're never listening to what everyone else has to say and you're missing out on so much knowledge. But like, if you, if you're, if you like for that, you need curiosity, man. Like yes. you need to be curious to, be in love with something you don't know yes. <laughs> and so if, once you are curious, curious about something which you don't know then that's when you are you know progressing and enjoying yeah jordan is a great man man <laughs> yes and it the, to be honest i think that it, it's kind of tough sometimes when you are involved in a startup to be involved or, or curious in areas that you are not necessarily acting on on a day-to-day -day basis like um, this clubhouse app that i told you about there's all these different rooms that have a bunch of different topics and stuff but honestly like i just i usually just join the it's called like startup cpg consumer consumer package goods and it's just a bunch of different founders because i feel like the stage at where i'm at right now like i feel like i'm going to gain the most value from that um, but i think that it's important also to be uh, like I'll just listen to like Joe Rogan is just one of the main podcasts that I listen to and he'll have guests on from a wide variety of backgrounds and, and to be able yes, to yes. Okay. what's interesting about like listening to the such people like not to the podcast or you know to the club like people in the club or especially reading books those people like telling their experience in like in one or two hours and they are just you know their whole experience of their whole life they are just explaining the whole experience like within an hour and you can get really good knowledge and you know lessons from those people like you can just listen to their whole life experience just like within an hour so it's really you know it's really effective way of learning. Yes, long form conversations and books too, you know, yeah. books and memoirs and um, autobiographies and people just telling their life story on from when they were a little kid and it's a super kind of relatable story and to the time where they're famous and rich and, and they're doing, they're having a big impact on the world. It's fascinating. It's, yeah, that's where you get your inspiration, man. Like yeah. you, you, you inspired, from those people you get your inspiration and once you get inspired then you like working really hard you know yeah and but never to be never to be those people like you're always kind of i like to look at it like i'm taking little bits and pieces from those people that i'm listening to taking little bits and pieces that i like and implementing it in my own life but you know at the end of the day I have my own experiences in life. You have your own experience in life. And that's what's 
that's yeah. what's really gonna kind of everybody do. yeah 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 and it's like um, having your own experiences and having your own thought as what most entrepreneurs make them to dislike colleges you know because the thing is that they are like learning by themselves most of the time because they have purpose right you have a purpose of like you know making an enterprise of like for instance ketchup like in the food industry so you got your purpose you can channel your thought like your energies and thoughts and time on just one particular thing and once you focus all the things on just one like particular goal then it acts like a convex lens you know a convex lens like which um, uh, which channel the whole light spectrum at one point and that one point get burned like the fire coming to me right so that's how human works like entrepreneurs have a purpose they have like a companies and startups and once they channel their energy and thought on that startup it end up like as a good company and you know a big enterprise but they are like in schools and college they have to do homeworks they have to do things which they don't like even so that's why they are like diverse they don't get time to focus on one thing so you know you have to have those things that you don't necessarily that you're not necessarily passionate about that's what makes you enjoy the things that you're passionate about so much. It's like, what would you do if you had all the money in the world and you never had to worry about money? Like you just had, just imagine that you had like a hundred million dollars in your bank account. Like that's a, a good question that I think people should ask themselves is like, this shouldn't be a money game. This shouldn't be like you, whatever you're doing, you should be doing it. Um, you should be doing it because you truly just like to do it. Like you truly enjoy the process. Um, not to say that there's no value in money. Like I'd rather, I'd, I would rather have $10 million in my bank account than not have $10 million in my bank account. And small problems in my life are gonna sting a lot less with that money in the bank account. But that should, that should never be. Um, yeah, 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 man. The, the yeah. main motive, like it can be, a, I think I look at it as an incentive. Like there's nothing wrong with looking at some big numbers, you know, putting big numbers up on the board in terms of your personal business and then your personal bank account. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but it shouldn't be like the only like motive. And that's how you get rich, man. Like if your only motives as enjoying the journey and your only motives as like you know uh, uh, like putting impact and you know influencing bringing valuable products and stuffs and you enjoy that process that journey that makes you rich man like that's how you get rich most you're of rich the time and, yeah you're enjoying it now if you're enjoying the pro if you're in a process now and you're enjoying it you're already rich yeah you are already rich and like if you then you begin like bargaining or exchanging those values which you obtain then you will get money for it right right so you're gonna get money for it and the money uh, getting those money is like a very huge amount then so that's how like people yeah get but it all age. starts from within yeah. you know it all starts with being um you know being spiritually rich and being being content with what you have um but also working every day for something more um, yeah being spiritual people. man yeah like <clears throat> you need to like having a spiritual growth uh you know and as well as like well like if you have a spiritual growth then the other mindset like you know purpose and all these things come with it right so uh so like if you are rich enough to have like a spiritual growth spiritual rich and if you get a purpose in life and you enjoy that right so you are already rich you know you 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 are gonna if you are then exchanging those what you learned or what you are doing then you will get money for it and that money is a sign of you know uh, you are being happy or you are being smart or you know and that's what i love about um, especially like uh, america like if you think of Silicon Valley, we have like people, like they have made legal wealth in the human history. The biggest legal wealth has been made in Silicon Valley. 
and those people have all people like whoever done those like made those big empires and those big tech startups were the people who enjoyed the whole journey and those are the people who like you know didn't do any corruption they obtained the money and like you know uh, in, a, in the most legal form and once you obtain money in the legal form then it makes you happy because you know you like you exchange your value in terms of you know products or services and you get money for it so that's what i love like about silicon valley like it's legal like the wealth being created unlike in other parts of the world like in london the, they looted other countries in 1800 and that was the center of wealth in 1850 or around those those century you know london was the center of yeah. uh, wealth in the whole world but i and think those were like you know those were like uh, looted those like you know they looted other countries and stuff but um, that's what interesting about the 21st century is that you know yeah. like you don't need to be like uh, uh, a king or a queen to revolutionize the world. You can be a king of your own life. You can be a single individual. You don't have to be like have a large number of soldiers, horses, bishops, and you know, you can be a single person to revolutionize the world, man. Like look at Elon Musk, you know, a single person like having an idea can do wonder. You don't need yeah. to be a king or queen. So that's interesting about 21st century and yeah. about uh, liberalism and capitalism, you know? Yeah, but it's all about getting outside of the traditional matrix that society has kind of shut you into. Like, it's like we're, we're, we're like, putting a place where it's like there, it's constantly like finite games where it's like you go from like you have, you know, for me, like school is like you go kindergarten to fifth grade, then middle school, like sixth grade to eighth grade, then high school, whatever, ninth grade to 12th grade, and then college, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's yeah. constantly like what's like what's you, you what's next, but that's not like a choice a lot of the time. And I think that, you know, it'll be, I'm really excited, honestly, to see what the next four years and, and after college is going to bring because most of the kids, all of the kids that are, you know, in university now have gone through all of that and have taken kind of the more traditional route. Like what comes next? Like what comes next after college? I mean, we're going to a very, very good school. A lot of kids are going to have some decent job opportunities, but what jobs are people going to go for? Like why and, and why like are they going into those jobs because they feel like they're kind of forced to because of their age? Or are they going into those society. jobs? Or are they going into those jobs because they're truly like truly passionate? And then there's going to be both. But I think that very few people our age are even thinking about these things or even thinking about what their intrinsic purposes in life and and or at least doing what they actually want to do like so many people look at it like i'm going to enter the finance world because i want to make money i'm going to enter marketing because i like the idea of business you know i don't think a lot of i, I want to enter healthcare because i want to help people it's very it's these very vague like terminologies and it's these very vague motives and I don't think a lot. It's going to be. I, I'm. I'm excited to see. Um, what what the next? What What would like life after college bring? Yeah, man. Like people, we like as you mentioned, we are going to one of the best university, and people here like are. I, I found some really motivated people, but I also met like those are very few, and most of them like are undecided. They don't even know what they are gonna like major in. Like you know. Yeah. And so it's really, I don't know, like if you don't know what you're going to do, like if you are traveling in a train and you don't know your destination, then the security or the person in the train would, you know, uh, take you to a police station or maybe to a mental hospital because you don't know about your destination. So it's better to have a destination, man. And I met people, some of the people, and those were like, uh, very scared about the real life, like being in professional life after college. 
they they enjoyed college they, they were enjoying college because they said we are getting tasks and we are getting it done and that's it but after college we will be in offices we will have boss we have to rank up you know and that's harder part you know to do in nine to five going nine in the morning and then coming back at five and so you yeah know. and then you got to pay bills and you got to you know take care of family or you know before you know it before you know it you're 45 years old and fucking yeah, man. Miserable. Yeah, Fuck yeah. miserable with some job that you fucking hate but yeah. that's not that doesn't have to be the case like I just, <laughs> one one person can fucking see this video and think about this and think about what 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 do you want to do like and you don't need to, and the thing is like like our society has formed it has shaped us to feel like we need to know when we're 18 years old or 21 years old like we don't need to know we don't need to you can be like you, we should be literally just like i'm a big gary vaynerchuk fan he always just talks about just try different things like when you're in your 20s when you're in your teens like don't yeah, be take risks. About what, take risks, what man. The best, like most conservative yeah field to go into think try yeah. to find what your passion is explore tech risks you know but like get rid of those cultural blocks and see what's what is there you know outside and so it's all about you know challenging the cultural blocks and um, yeah man it's it's so scary like people have to take risks you know People and it's the time and once you graduate then it's harder to take risks because responsibilities come in. You know? yeah. You will have to, you know, society pressure, you have to settle down, you have to pay your bills, you have to do this and that. A hard and you won't time. have time to take risk. And then there comes the people who have taken risk. My some are, most of them are like dropped out and those have taken risk during high schools or colleges. And those people like employing the, those like people who have been through colleges and they pay them, you know, pay their bills, give them money, pay, pay for their vacations to forget about their own dreams and work yeah. for them. So that's how it works. You man. know, it's, it's a hard pill for people to swallow, but I think it's important to say that like, yeah i mean once you're out of college like it, it's real life like it's real life it's real life obligations you're gonna you're gonna at that point um i don't think that you're gonna need like you're gonna have to have a job of some sort you don't have to find your career but you're there's not a better time to start that business there's not a better time to explore different passions than right now then right now, meaning at kids for kids that are our age that are in college, we have so, so much yeah. time. I have college, so much yeah. more time than high school now. Like I have a, we have so much time, and it's like, yeah, we have homework, yeah, we have classes, but then it comes down to what are you doing with the rest of your time? Like I I, I know that like that college i don't like to say that college is supposed to be the best time of your life i think every new year should be the best year of your life yeah. no matter if you're 98 years old or, or 18 but like this shouldn't be just time like i guess if you're partying all the time if you're hanging out with friends all the time and you're not putting any time into exploring who you are what your interests are pushing on a business that you started if you're not doing any of that then don't expect anything to be there for you or <laughs> true, true 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 bro like you need to explore college is for like exploring different fields discovering your passions and starting working on some ideas working on some some things which you know which have influence and you know thinking and exploring around and but I've seen lots of people, like almost like 75% of the people like I encounter, like when I meet them, they say what you were doing on the Friday. And when I ask them what you were doing for the Friday, and they say, I watched this movies. I went to the beach. I hang out with friends and all these things. And so I like, I don't enjoy the conversation. Like, you know, yeah. like- There's nothing, like there's no, it, it, you're not getting any like I, I just you, you know what I mean like you're not 
like yeah it, there's some fun to be had but like you're not there's there's nothing further than that yeah yeah truly yeah there's nothing like you know <laughs> like what do you like, you're, unless like are you really like you're, you're you're going to like a club or something you're getting absolutely like hammered drunk are you really going to be thinking about or talking about like business ideas and just like <laughs> and your passions and things like that probably yeah. not i mean sometimes i've had some conversations you know with friends and stuff in that kind of environment but not you know i don't think most of the time that's the case like I think that there is a time and place for that kind of living and that kind of lifestyle. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think there's something wrong with it, in my opinion, <laughs> when you're doing it consecutively and you're not taking any time for yourself. Like if you're, if you're constantly surrounding yourself with big groups of people and you're doing what everyone else wants to do, then you're going to naturally become more like everyone else. And what the fuck yes, kind of yes. life you're like it's everyone true. else? It really influences me, man. So I think like for the students, uh, like if you think overall, like for the human civilization to survive and flourish, we will need fundamental and also change to the way we think and operate, I guess, you know? Yes. You know, apart to abundance and prosperity, you know, and um, for that we need an entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah. It starts know? with these conversations. It starts with, it starts with you know, just having me and you having and, this conversation. And we humans, and we humans are like very special species, and you know, we have like very unique human like attributes. Like we were talking about curiosity and imagination and once these attributes are hands to the you know the engine of exponential innovation we become really empowered to create a future without limits you know and that's the only way to for this civilization to flourish and survive but yeah. and humans are naturally just extremely contagious i think energy is contagious so it's like yeah all it takes that's like the root of it is like having this conversation you know maybe i i i i make like you know this 10 minute the, the what we've been talking about for the past five minutes into a five minute clip one person watches it on youtube and then they go say something to their friend of like hey like let's start to think about something big let's start to think about something that is going to benefit you know both of us or me and you in the long term what is like let's let's do something different than what we've been doing let's change something and then yeah. you know, your friends see that and it's a whole ripple effect and it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man, it's really beautiful. We human, but like, as we seen like on the campus, like we are such a, you know, a, large, uh, a lost nation and I don't know what the future holds for us, but I guess like to conquer like the world uh, greatest challenges, we first need to restore our last sense of wonder, you know, to reclaim a mindset driven like by possibility, thinking, imagination, curiosity, and most importantly, the courage to, you know, ask big question, you know, daring question, like what if, you know, and sometimes like a crazier question, why not dare to dream an amazing abundance and prosperous future, you know? So that's after all, that's what, what uh, an entrepreneur or a moonshot is all about, man. Love it. Yeah. So that's how you conquer the world's biggest challenges. And we you, are like six. You first have to conquer yourself. You first have to conquer your your shortcomings. We're all, we all have shortcomings. Yeah, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it, it takes some like breaking the inertia, takes something truly extraordinary you know to overcome it you know to overcome the resistance and that something is you you know <laughs> that something is within all, you to be all, the king of your own life i think we all have the light with the light whatever we all have it within us and you might not be able to see it right now you might not be able to feel you might feel like shit you might feel completely depressed whatever it is but just know that like 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 that's going to change like you yeah. just have to break the 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 law of inertia like you like an object yeah. standing still tends to stand still like yeah. you gotta you gotta get moving physically mentally just get moving and have different conversations and change that block change that 
yeah you'll start to see change in your life and, and how you see the world um, gohar is there any other things that you wanted to say before we wrap up here um that's it read man it was so nice man talking i know. appreciate you i appreciate you coming on today man it was fun um yeah well if, if anyone watching still if you're still watching uh go follow gohar at on instagram <laughs> at, at. yeah man we what are not <laughs> yeah all right we'll so go all right Reed. Yeah, yes, yes. We'll be in touch and let's get dinner again soon. That was fun. Yeah, man. Let's get dinner sometimes. Let's yeah. Catch up. Cool, man. Have a good night. You too, man. Have yep. a good night. Bye. See you then.